Good day, colleagues. We are back again to look at preparatory tip three as the right shop to fast track transformation of COVAB's programs into online courses on Makare University e learning environment approaches. This right shop will take place on the 29th September and 30th September which is a Friday and a Saturday. And we're dedicating time away from our lectures, away from our administrative meetings, so that we can develop the detailed design document, which is a blueprint to help us get our courses online onto the learning management system. And tip three will look at part five and six out of the eight parts on the template that makes up the detailed design document. Part five looks at the constructive alignment of the course, while part six looks at aligning the topics into the allotted time on the semester, on the university semester timetable. So constructive alignment of the course. What is this? This is a framework or scaffold that's applied to course development and it enables us to link the learning outcomes to the assessments that will evaluate these learning outcomes and again to the teaching activities that will deliver these learning outcomes or facilitate learning while at the same time providing or promoting an environment under which the learning will be done. So let's start with the learning outcomes. In part two, three, and four, we looked at the learning outcomes and even aligned topics that will deliver content for those course-wide intended learning outcomes. So intended learning outcomes are what we want the learners to know, demonstrate, or do by the end of a particular course. And the intended learning outcomes can be course-wide or they can be topic-specific. When we teach the different topics that deliver our course-wide intended learning outcomes each topic has got a set of competencies and therefore we have a set of competencies that we want our learners to know demonstrate or do after attending a particular topic so the assessment the assessment needs to evaluate whether the learning outcomes have been achieved and the assessment may be tests may be practical demonstrations and may be seminars so we have to after we've identified the different type of assessments that we want to deliver to our learners to evaluate them we can now design teaching activities that will enable us implement these assessments while at the same time these teaching assess these teaching activities are assisting the learner learn the competencies so these teaching activities you know they may be lectures if we want to use tests to evaluate they may be seminars i mean they may be discussions if we want to use seminars as a method of evaluation, maybe practicals, if you want to use demos, the students demonstrating to us what they can do as a method of assessment, they might be research, it's really up to us. Now, all of these teaching activities and the assessments which deliver the 
intended learning outcomes are carried out in a particular environment that promotes them, which usually includes a time frame and a venue. So let's look at these sets of activities using a different module. Model, sorry. We've got our course-wide intended learning outcomes. We already have them after we did section three and section four of our DDDs. We aligned topics to these course-wide intended learning outcomes in section two. And now we're going to go step ahead and generate or synthesize topic specific intended learning outcomes. So by the time the student has listened to topic one, there is a set of competencies that we expect them to know, demonstrate or do. And these topic specific intended learning outcomes align well with our course wide intended learning outcomes. So we look at the assessments. How are we going to assess that the students know? How are we going to assess that the students can actually know, demonstrate or do what we want them? So are we going to use assignments? Are we going to use tests, seminars, practicals? We need to align that in our model. Then we look at the teaching materials, which are going to facilitate learning by the students. PowerPoint slides, open education resources like YouTube, links, general articles, news clips, textbooks, practicals, you name it. And all this learning has to take place in an environment that allows it to do so. So there's a time frame and there's a venue. And we are asking which week will this topic be done? Which day will the assessment be done? Is it face to face? Is it online? And that will deliver uh, the constructive alignment of our course or module. Now here, this is an example of a constructive alignment for the module MBS 7219, which is a master for master's students called graduate molecular microbiology. If you allow me, I'll make it a little bit bigger. So it's part five of the DDD and it's table four. In part three and four, we got the topics that will be taught under this module to deliver a particular set of intended learning outcomes. And this particular topic on vaccine discovery, the ELOs are addressed under intended learning outcome three. I would go to the study guide or the DDD to find out what intended learning outcome three is. And by the end of this topic, you, the learner, should be able to describe the history of vaccines and identify various innovations that boosted development of the vaccine industry. So the topic activities that are used to, de to deliver the learning are YouTube videos on vaccine uh, history and discovery, PowerPoint lectures, scientific uh, publications, and they have a set of self-assessment questions. Activities are done in person at Macquarie University or remotely times. How the topic will be assessed, 
They are the self-assessment questions. Students will present seminars. It's a discussion forum where they can post comments. Um, assignments will be submitted. There's an end of semester examination. And the teaching resources that I'm going to use for this particular topic, I have assembled them here. There's a PowerPoint slide. It's not shown here. There are YouTube video links that I use. The journal articles that I'm going to give to my students. And I haven't put the discussion set one questions, but they are part of the PowerPoint slide lecture. So that in a nutshell gives us the template, uh, gives us an overview of the template that we've been given by Iodell in the DDD detailed design document to deliver. Now, because we have a long list of topics and I'm not the one delivering or teaching all the topics, there might be some rows that are blank where I hope my colleagues are going to fill them in and perhaps when we meet at the right shop, we can align this and get a complete DDD. So the fact that they haven't yet um, filled this in does not stop me from working on my section. So does constructive alignment of the cost benefit our learners? Yes, it does. It helps our learners gain a broader understanding of how the course is organized and why we do things in the way we do them to support their learning in the course or module. It's actually a roadmap to assist them as they learn and know which parts they have at, uh, attended to and which parts they haven't attended to. Whether they've actually been able to identify with the learning outcomes or they haven't grasped anything. So a section of the constructive alignment appears in the study guide, not in as much detail as has been given in the DDD, but a section does appear. So let's go to that section and see. This is our study guide that we give the students. It has the college, the university college, the name of the course, MBS 7219, Applied Molecular Microbiology. I'll jump to the next page. Here we give them the aims of the course, learning outcomes, and grading. This we did in part four of the DDD. But then we also give them the constructive alignment of the course. We've given them the ELOs, course wide ELOs, so 7219 Applied Microbiology is guided by ELOs 1 up to 5. But we've also given them the constructive alignment of the module. We have the topic that's being taught. The course-wide or module-wide ELOs, the different topics address. The topic-specific ELOs, by the end of this topic, they should be able to do A, B, C. We've given them the week when the topic will be studied, the venue Makerere University O, it can be done remotely. And we've also given them a section on the strategy we are going to use for assessment. And from here they can see they have self-assessment questions, set one, seminars, a discussion forum to attend to, assignments, and we shall also use end of semester examinations to assess them. 
Now let's go back to our PowerPoint slide. So yes, learners benefit from the constructive alignment of the course and they use it as a map to guide their learning. So part six, we align the topics we have into the weeks where teaching is done. And the university semester has about 14 weeks of teaching and then some four weeks of examinations. So here we've aligned our topics to fit in the university semester timetable. Some of the topics take only one week, other topics may take more than one week, or you can find in a particular week, you're looking at two or more topics. So thank you. Wish you the best as we continue working on the detailed design documents which we will bring to completion in the right shop on Friday the 29th and Saturday the 30th. Thank you. Let me stop.